So the first big trend is things like auto ML and driverless AI and so on. These are the things that are making ML more easy and adoptable by many. So it used to be the case that, oh, you learn Python, you learn Keras, or you learn TensorFlow, or PyTorch, and then you start playing around with large data sets, and then you learn deep learning. But today, for most applications, you can just do auto ML, you can use it. It is just a very graphical user interface. It has a very beautiful one. It is very intuitive and to some extent, you may not be able to optimize it or fine tune it, but to some extent, if you have lots of data, you can just try to analyze the data and train and build some models, right? That will be the first step, and that is very possible. It has made this kind of machine learning accessible to many. You don't need to learn a new programming language and become a champ at it before you start training models, correct? And as we get more and more data, you and more and more uh, larger and larger networks, you want to distribute them. And there are libraries like Horoworld from Uber and TensorFlow Collective. They help in distributing these kind of training. And with IoT, or what we call edge AI devices, you need to build small enough models because most of these edge AI devices, the inference chips, are very uh, sensitive to power consumption, right? You don't want to, they have a small battery and you don't, you cannot afford to burn away a lot of power. So you want to optimize your model so that they burn very little power. At the same time, they should not drop their inference accuracy. They should do it really well. And we also see algorithmic ideas from other fields like neural evolutionary computing. What it does is, is borrows techniques from genetic algorithms to find better hyperparameters for your deep learning neural networks, right? And similarly, there is some effort um, to infuse some techniques from symbolic reasoning to reason about some of the decisions made by the current day neural networks, which basically depend on pattern matching and security. And this should be the first bullet on my very first slide because it's very, very important. And many of the security and encryption techniques um, are receiving renewed interest just because of cloud computing and primarily because of deep learning because most of the deep learning workloads are going to the cloud or performed in the cloud. And this is mostly with respect to apps that have critical data like personal data or medical data and so on. So all these techniques you would have heard about differential privacy, fully homomorphic encryption, all of these techniques is new. They have been existing for several decades, but the deep learning and the cloud computing have pushed it or made it very, very attractive today. So let us start, given all these challenges and what are the trends that are happening, let us speculate some of the, what we can expect from future AI. So there are many unsolved problems. So I'm going to speculate that at least some of these things should be solved. I'm not even saying I hope they are solved because I'm saying they should be solved in order for AI to be more widely adopted, right? The first is explainable AI. This is one of my personal favorites. There is no reliable way today to explain the choices or decisions made by a DL algorithm. There is some research that has provided some uh, results, but if you take any large scale AI system, it's very likely it cannot explain even an image classification system that classifies images of dogs and cats. It really cannot explain why it classified a dog image as a dog, right? It cannot really do any reasoning behind it. It can only say, oh, the accuracy is 95%, and we just compute this accuracy and just rely on that. And there's also the symbolic AI and deep learning. This is kind of promising because it is trying to explain some of the decisions, but you know, because you used pattern matching to learn, symbolic AI can not do much, or at least as of now, they haven't exploited the techniques of symbolic AI well enough that it is able to explain all the decisions, all the intermediate neural network layers, whatever it decided, they are not able to do that. But hopefully this infusion of these techniques will be promising. 
And this might be one of those techniques that will lead to explainable AI. We have to wait and see. The other thing is because of distributed training, the GPU utilization in clusters for deep learning workloads has become a big challenge. There's a very recent Microsoft research paper that talks about GPU utilization. They have profiled the utilization of several GPUs in a cluster uh, for different workloads. And you can imagine that's bound to happen, right? Because the workloads themselves are very dynamic. So you cannot really fine tune a distributed network of GPUs so that each and every GPU is utilized to the best possible extent when you do not know the shape and size and the behavior of the workloads, which are the inputs to the system, correct? So it is a very challenging problem, but you may want to solve it because if you are renting a GPU cluster, you want to make the best use of it, right? You don't want only a few GPUs working 100% and most of them spending only 50% of their effort because you're paying for them. You want to use them to the best extent, correct? And security, again, as I told, this should have been the first bullet point. Um, I don't know how to convince that security is one of the most important aspects. So I'm just going to show some recent news clips and I will let you convince yourself that you're using at least one of those applications that got hacked or uh, got exploited, right? It's not that um, the the specific, it's not about the specific application, but you may think about any equivalent application, right? For example, it's not about Uber. You can think about any ride hailing service or any, uh, the sharing service, correct? And you can think about Instagram, so it's a social network, again, Facebook, again, Docker Hub, correct? So this should have already convinced you that you would have used at least one of them you have a bank account, you have a social network account, or you would have used Uber. So the security, if you look at all these things, all these companies have enough manpower to work on security, to do research on security, but they are doing great work, but the security is such a big challenge because it's very difficult. The hackers are always smarter than the engineers who build them, right? Because you cannot think of all possible scenarios, uh, things can go wrong. 